मुखम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंघयते गिरिम यत्कृपा तमहम वंदे परमानंद माधव अज्ञानति मिरांधस्य ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुर उन्मीलितम येना तस्मे श्री गुरुवे नमः माय स्टीम कलीग्स and friends in order to undertake a very serious kind of research you need to develop scholarship and uh, the topic chosen for this conference is a very serious kind of a topic and you need to prepare yourself to dive into it in our tradition there were education program to develop a scholarship and we were told from the very childhood there is three disciplines you have to study very closely to develop the samarthya the capacity to analyze thoughts human thoughts and how can you analyze analyze human thoughts is a abstract thought is an abstract thing how can we analyze it then we were told that thoughts are encoded in language so when you analyze language you analyze thought and you need to therefore have developed training in doing this and that will generate capacity to understand analyze and communicate and these three disciplines were one discipline called vyakarana grammar to capture the structure of language <coughs> second discipline was nyaya shastra to capture the capacity to relate something rationally rationality and the third discipline was urvami mamsa and that is to analyze discourse because when you make a point you don't use only one sentence so it's a sentence made of many sentences and that is discourse and therefore a scholar is to be identified by the parameter of these three in terms of these three uh, systems and a, dig- a honoring is to be done with a title called pad vakya pramana gya so the one who gets this title he is a scholar <laughs> so from the very beginning we have been told that we should develop these three areas of system of knowledge one to understand because we human beings understand through language analyze through language communicate through language and therefore it is very essential for us to understand the structure of language and that is provided by grammar panini therefore was our first uh, focus and then purvami mamsa told us how to analyze discourses and then nyaya shastra your thought must be cogent rational karya karana bhava uh, siddha so these are the training educational training that we have given in that so when he suggested vada then i thought that okay let me also reflect on this and i am presenting before you my little now we have a very great uh, tradition of debate huh? a very tradition debate a very small kind of a conversation right from the vedic time then very deeper conversation in the upanishadic time 
and a systematic conversation. I mean, later on, we go on doing. So we have uh, inherited a very great tradition, very rich tradition of dialogue right from the Vedic times. In fact, the structural depth of Indian epistemology is the contribution of this very dialogical mode of communication. This, this is the point that I wanted to present before you. So if you are going to look into text, derive a conclusion. And uh, when you have a particular view and uh, others have different from you, then there are doubts and therefore you are required to engage yourself in the vichara, in discourse. And that is why uh, all the, because the very purpose of philosophy, philosophy uh, has been to arrive at the truth. So, uh, as uh, Professor Dikshit was telling you, Tattva Jnana. So, that was the purpose and that could be possible when you are, so it was not simply soliloquy, okay, I am talking to myself. When you are talking to yourself, you can do whatever you like. When you are talking publicly or, and your opinion does not match others' opinion, then you need to think and think collectively, not alone. And that takes you to, I think this is the tool which is needed by all historians because now, <laughs> so I thought that this is an occasion to introduce the traditional method of inquiry into truth. This is what we do. Now beautifully presented by Bhartriyari, it is this fact. Uh, Professor Kapoor was referring to him and that you are a limited being, you, are, you never forget that you have a very limited capacity. Kinchit Gyatva is the definition of little you know. We all know very, 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 very little. So if we have to arrive at the truth, we should listen to others. So we might just get exposed to what the other's way of thinking, other opinion, other parameters, others' grounds, etc. Keeping this in mind, Bhartiriyari writes this verse. It's beautifully. He says, Pragya vivekam lavati. Pragya is knowledge. If you do this, if you are exposed to other ways of not knowing, then your knowledge will be transformed into wisdom. Viveka. So, Pragya Vivekam Lavate. How he says, Bhinnehi Agama Darshanai. If you are confined only to your own domain, then you remain that Kinchit Gya continues to be there. But when you are exposed to other domains also, then your knowledge has expanded and maybe knowledge will be transformed to Viveka or wisdom. Because he says that why I am advising this, giving this advice because Kiyadba Shakya that is what I, I am a human being. How much can I, if I depend only on myself and do not listen to others, other ways of thinking, that how much can I conjecture? So Kiyadba Shakya Munnetu Swatarkam Anudhavata If I simply <laughs> rely on my own logic, and on my own way of thinking, how much can I know? Therefore, I think this is the assembly for doing this kind of a job. I don't know history. I will come to know history in three days. <laughs> but this is what our ancestors were telling us. Kautilya has been mentioned very rightly. A pillar of intellectual, one of the giants, intellectual giants the country has, has produced. He mentions four disciplines of his time. Anvikshiki, Trayi, Varta and Dandiniti. Anvikshiki, logic and epistemology. Trayi, Vedic heritage, entire Vedic lore. Varta, economics and commerce. 
and Dandaniti, political science and administration. Now all this, why is he doing this? There is a section called Vidya Samudresha. He is trying to educate the administrator, the king. So before he becomes an administrator, he should undergo this education. And then he has first he has given the so what should be the philosophy of administration? Praja Sukhe Sukham Ragyan. Natma Hitam Hitam Ragyaha. Prajanam to Hite Hitam. Your own welfare should not be the welfare. The welfare of the public should be your welfare. This is the philosophy of administration given by Kautilya. Should you not write this and put on the table of all ministers? So Praja Sukhe Sukham Natma Hitam. Hita is welfare. So when I was uh, talking in a political science department and I said the welfare, I said the welfare concept has come from them. Now, <laughs> no, what, what, in, a, in, in what other way you can translate this? Atma Hita is not Hita for the king, but Praja Hita is the Hita. So the welfare of the public is the welfare of the king. Now, king is your prime minister now, whatever may be. So this is the four disciplines. Now, Anvikshiki, uh, what is the term? What is the meaning of this term? And uh, there was a long tradition and by the end of 10th century, Matsyayana himself has uh, given it that Anvikshiki should mean logic and epistemology. Logic and epistemology is the meaning of the term Anvikshiki. And Jayanta Bhatta, the Kashmiri logician of 9th century, he, all these centuries, etc., I am telling on the basis of the existing knowledge that we have been given on the existing books. So your chronology perhaps may change all of them, all of them, and I hope they should be changed. Because with many of them, I myself do not, but I don't know, I have simply impressions, but I have not worked on any of these areas. So he says, Idameva Anvikshiki, Chatashrinam Vidyanam Madhye Nyaya Vidya Ganyate. This is what is Nyaya Shastra. Anvikshiki is Nyaya Shastra. And in one Dharma, Dharma, Dharma Sutra, a king has to be, uh, a, in an assembly of a king, one must be present with a logician. Because the, if you have to deliver justice, it should be justice. And there should be any favoritism. And logician is a, is a person who will not allow this to happen. So one should be the logician. So he is referring to that kind of. So Anvikshaki means Nyaya Shastra. Pratyaksha Agama Abhyam Yakshitasya Anvikshanam Anviksha Anumanam Ityartha. So it's a theory of inference. Tad Vyutpadaka Shastram Anvikshakam. That is, that is what I say. So that science of logic and epistemology. Kutilya now says that why I am telling this, that this should be the focus of the king. Uh, because if he has masters this discipline of logic and epistemology, he will be able to analyze. And what is the role that the Nyaya Shastra can play that he presented in this verse? It's a torch, it's a light through which you can see all disciplines. It's a science of sciences. So, Pradipaha Sarva Shastranam, Upayaha Sarva Karmanam. Your, uh, if you have to distinguish yourself from say, insane, then only the logic is the tool by which you can distinguish from a mad from non mad. So, rationality, irrationality, this distinction can be achieved only when you master this science of logic and epistemology. Not only that, ashraya sarva dharmanam, all, then you cannot commit any wrong thing. So, ethi, ethi, ethical behavior will take place through you. So, it is ashraya sarva dharmanam, sashudan mikshiki mata. You can see the role given to Nyaya Shastra by Kautilya in those days. Then Gautama 
systematizes the whole thing. All the dialogue which were taking place through the, right from the Vedic age, the Upanishad and all through, he started systematizing them. And the first sutra that we have already heard from Professor Dikshit, that Pramana, Prameya, 16 items he writes. So this Nyaya Shastra deals with these 16, they call it Padartha. But Padartha has a problem, the term Padartha has a problem. Padartha literally means a referent of a Pada. And it also means a category. But here, this has not been used in the sense of category. It has been used in the sense of items, topics, which are required for getting involved in discourse. This is what. Now you can see, Pramana, Prameya. Pramana is the method. The process of knowing is a Pramana. Prameya, the whole universe. Whole universe is Prameya means Prama Vishaya. The object of my true cognition is Prameya. The entire, whatever you know, the content is Prameya. And then from there onwards, Samshaya, doubt, Prayojana, purpose, Drishtanta, example, Siddhanta, conclusion, Avayava is again, or Parartha Anumana, Anumana, Tarka, Vyapti Anugrahaka. By which, if someone has a doubt regarding the relationship, so you claim something and they give a ground for the claim. It will work as long as there is an invariable relationship between X and Y. But if someone doubts that, how can you stop him from doubting? And for that, this reasoning called Tarka was introduced. So Tarka, then you, ex then you give an imagined example. For example, someone says, let there be smoke, there is no, there is no guarantee that there is, there is, there is fire. Then he, then he will say that had there not been fire, there would not have been smoke. So the relationship of causal is pointed out, then he will not put further question. And that establishes the relationship between smoke and fire. And so from smoke, you can really go to no, no fire. So this is Tarka reasoning. Then Niranaya conclusion, conclusion, and then the three terms come on which we want to reflect for a few, few moments. Uh, you remind me. Uh, <laughs> Vada, Jalpa, Vitanda. These are the three. So I put them in red. This is what the topic of our discussion today. My, my daughter helped me in doing all this. Don't think that I know all this. So. Vada, Jalpa, Vitanda. Vada is the ideal form of discourse. Jalpa is a discourse, but the aim is not to arrive at the truth. Aim is to win. And Vitanda is just to put criticism on you. That, okay, you, no, no, what you say is wrong. But don't ask me what is right. So these are the three forms of discourses is put together. So these are the three types of discourses. Then Hetva, then you may be using uh, very fallacious grounds. So Hetva Bhasa. Then you may be somebody, uh, someone is arguing something in, uh, in a particular language and that language contains some term and the term has got more than one meaning. So what you do? You, the relevant meaning you give up and you take up another meaning and say this is what it is. So this is chala. And then wrong answer give hurriedly. Oh, he, he could not notice and then we win. Nigrahasthana, points of defeat. Then there will be a madhyastha, so there is a purupaksha, that is a siddhantin and a madhyastha. And the debate. So debate, you know, the rules of debate are given in the text. What should be the rules of debate? All this. So, so believes that both the purposes of life, namely Abhyudaya and Nishresha, can be achieved by knowing the reality as it is. So for them, the world is real, no construction. World is not constructed world. 
it is real and with this real world we behave all our life. <coughs> Katha is another name for discourse and it has been defined as Nana Vaktrika Purva Uttara Paksha Pratipadaka Vakya Sandarva Katha. So, yeah, so you, many people come having different opinions and they sit together, get engaged in discourses. Some take a particular view, some other oppose it. So all these sentences taken together what form a discourse. So that is a katha. Three types of discourse I have just pointed out. That vada, jalpa and vitanda. Vada is the ideal form. Vada has been defined. Or another beauty of the tradition is that whatever term is used is immediately defined. So you cannot go back. No, I did not mean it. The moment I utter a term, I define it. And so communication becomes very, very possible, very clear. What I want to say, you understand. And whatever you want to say, I understand. And then we can arrive at the truth. So, tattva. So, we will go. So, he says, what is, what is a vada? Vada is pramana, tarka, sadhana. Up, sadhana or upalamba. Either you prove or you reject but on the basis of pramana and tarka. All that you do, so this is the ideal form of a discourse where you can use only pramana and tarka. You cannot go to use any other chala, jati, nigrahastha, all these things you cannot use it. But people are using it, therefore you should be aware of it. And therefore you should know all of them. Then jalpa, yathok to upanna, chala, jati, nigrahastha. Because his uh, idea is to win by hook or crook. So even by foul means he will be winning by taking part in the discourse. But then that will be a second category of discourse called jalpa. Not to be. So ideal form is vada and the another form is jalpa which is just aim. And vitanda as I told you, sa pratipaksha sthapana hina. So you cannot, you don't have your own opinion. What you say that what you say is wrong, that's all. This is the form of a discourse. This is also not promoted. But people are using it, therefore you should know it. Pramana, and given the four, Pratyaksha, so direct and indirect. So directly knowing Pratyaksha, indirectly by Urmana, Shabda, Upamana. This TV you should know. So you should use only these ways of knowing in, in discourse. Tarka avigyata tattve arthe karanopa pattitaha tattva jnana artha uvaha tarka. So you can, so that's why tarka is said to be ayatha artha jnana because of this. That you create a situation had there not been fire. Now there is no fire, but I am creating now in my image. This is construction. This is construction. So had there not been fire, there would not have been smoke. Now this real, now this is not real. So this is tarka, but it is necessary to create this in order to stop him from asking irrelevant questions and, do, and not allowing you to proceed to know the, know the truth. So you should use this tarka. Annam Bhatta, very beautifully, very simple language, he has defined all these concepts so beautifully. He says, Tattva Bhutso Katha Vada. What is a Vada? What is an ideal form of a discourse? Is that which aims at arriving at the truth. So a discourse that aims at arriving at the truth is vad, ideal form. And then what is jal, what is jalpa? Ubhaya sadhanavati vijigi shukatha jalpa. He wants to win. And therefore he can, he, he can employ some foul means as well. So chala, jati, etc. he can use. And because he wants, his idea is not to arrive at the truth. His aim is to win. Vijaya. And then, Vitanda, Swapaksha Sthapana Hina. You don't have anything of your own. You don't have any position of your own. But if anybody has taken a position, you criticize it. It is not correct. So I say that if you don't ask me, then you know what is right. You are wrong. What is right? Don't ask me. This is the idea of Vitanda. 
And uh, Chala, what is Chala? I, I, I already told you that if, if you find some loophole in some word used, a polysemous word is used in the argument, you take another meaning and start arguing. So, Abhiprayantraena Prayuktasya Arthantaram Prakalpya Dushanam Chalam. And Jati is Asaduttaram. And wrong, wrong knowledge, a uh, wrong answer. Then Vadinaha Apajay Hetu Hoso, the points of defeat. This is Nigrasthana. Then the Adhaksha, the Madhyastha, will ask you, oh, go out of the debate. You are not fit for the debate. Like that. It was just like that. Now, friends, from Gautama up to Udayanacharya, we have a, a recorded text of Vada, of discourse. And these four, there are four, and mode of discourse was commentary, commenting. So when Gautama wrote something, the opponents raised objections. Then Vatsyayana replied by writing commentaries. When Vatsyayana wrote commentaries, again objections were raised. It was further commented upon by Udyotakara. And Udyotakara, when clarified, then further questions were asked, replied by Vachaspati, and then like that, up to Udayanachari who come, is a history of thousand years. And these texts are summarily called Nyaya Chatur Granthika, the collection of four texts. These are the four commentaries, commentaries on commentaries on commentaries. That means objection, reply, objection, reply, like that. So mode of dialogue. So this is how we created, we were taking part in the dialogue, in not only in the Parishad, but also on, in my writing commentaries, we used to take part in the dialogue and discourse. Now the dialogue was not within only, it was not a closed door dialogue in one system. It was open, public dialogue. Anybody having any opinion could take part in the debate and can, can assert. So this dialogue of Nyaya Vaisheshika school of about thousand years was mainly with the Buddhist logicians. They were arguing but not that other Astika Darshanas were not also asking. They were also asking. Because Nyaya Darshana is one of the six Astika Darshanas, no? So others do not see eye to everything. They do not subscribe uh, to everything, all the opinions of Nyaya. So others were also asking. So the Nyaya had to answer them also. So not only the Nastika Darshana questions were being answered, but Astika Darshana questions also were being answered. So it was an inter and inter systematic dialogue. So, and my, my friend, my own understanding is that this is the reason, this kind of a holistic approach is the reason of the structural depth of Indian epistemology. Indian epistemology is so deep because of this openness, adopting a mode, dialogical mode, in which it was an open dialogue and not a closed close dialogue, either within a system or within a faith. No faith came on the way. Two stages of development we find. So 1000 years, that is up to Udayana Acharya, one, one, all recorded in, through the history, through the commentary. And thereafter, Udayana Acharya thinks that uh, I had already, uh, Udyotaka had already clarified, Vatsana had already clarified, and still Buddhists are not getting satisfied. What is the reason? Again and again clarifying, still you are not getting convinced. What could be the reason? And that gave to the emergence of Navyanyaya. He thought that it must be the language through which we are doing this discourse. That is creating a problem. So we need to create a language of discourse, which should be free from ambiguity. So instead of using natural language, why not create a language which is especially designed for a discourse which will minimize the chance of ambiguity. And that gave birth to 
This thousand years dialogue is known as Prachinan Nyaya. Fortunately, we have preserved huge amount of analytic literature of this period. Navya Nyaya, now I just told you, so that gave rise to the development of a new language known as Navya Nyaya language. So the center of this was Mithila and Navadvipa. These are the two originated, these are the two centers. And they were all meeting in Varanasi, <laughs> as the Kumbh Mela, Professor Kapoor was telling. So they were all coming, and Varanasi being the central place of pilgrimage, scholars of all parts of the country used to gather there. And this is how Navinya reached to each and every corner of our country. From, so from Mithila, Bengal, Varanasi, and all India, Pan Indian. In the, all India, it, it, it raised. So from Udayanachar, and then the same tradition started writing commentary over commentary over commentary. Then Udayanacharya started that Navinaya language. Shashadhara em employed that, made an experiment of that language, and he wrote a beautiful collection of 26 Vadas called Nyaya Siddhanta Deepa. So, if you want to know the structure of a vada, please see this book, Nyaya Siddhanta Deepa. It is a collection of 26 <laughs> issues on that discussion, discourses on 26 issues of that, and written in the Vinaya language. So, it is pre Gangesha. And then Gangesha Upadhyaya writes Tattva Chintamani, the magnum opus of the Vinaya. And then Raghunath Shalomani from Navadvipa comes there and studies this and takes back all this to Navadvipa and a new school, two schools emerge from there in Navadvipa. One is called Jagadisha school and the other one is called Gadadhara school. Interpretations differ. So there is no question of, you know, Makshika, Sthane, Makshika. Whatever I say, you have to understand, you cannot question. In our tradition, there is no dogmatism. There is no scope of any dogmatism at any point of time. Believe me, whole life I have spent only in learning this. So, the same text of Raghunath Shiromini in Navadvipa is being interpreted in two different ways. One by Jagadishatarka Alankara and the other by Gadadhar Bhattacharya, both emerging into two schools of Navyanya. You can imagine the contribution. Emergence of two schools. Once the language of Nabinyaya was developed, it was adopted by all systems of knowledge. Now, they got a tool. It, see, therefore, I consider the Nyaya Shastra's contribution is developing tools and make them available to all those who are interested in cognitive exercises. So they developed this language, and language is proved to be so useful, it minimizes the chances of ambiguity, and therefore all systems of knowledge, without any, ex any exception, even Rasaganga Dhara, aesthetics is written in this language. Grammarian Konda Bhatta writes in this language. Gaga Bhatta Bimamsa writes in this language. Madhusudana Saraswati Advaita Vedanta, he writes in this language. So that becomes a common language of discourse, common language of bhada, getting the ideal form of arriving at the truth. And that and this is the language of debate even today in traditional Patshalas. <coughs> Format of discourse. I, I just you open Naya Siddhanta Deepa, any Vada or or Tatjintamani, anywhere, you will find this. An issue is selected. All divergent views on that issue are noted down. Now, don't teach us scientific research, you know. Uh, now, can there be any better, any, any, any other scientific research you tell me? Right now, I challenge. You see, all divergent views on that view are noted down. Each opinion is analyzed, honored, analyzed, and critically examined. 
सो लेट हिम बी ए चारवाक लेट हिम बी ए जैन लेट हिम बी ए बुद्ध लेट हिम बी इफ नया का लेट हिम बी ए मीमांस का लेट हिम बी ए वेदांत इन डज नॉट मैटर इफ ही होल्ड्स अ डिफरेंट व्यू देन माय व्यू इट इज माय ड्यूटी टू रिकॉर्ड दैट व्यू एनालाइज इट डिस्कवर द पर्पस फॉर व्हिच ही हैव ही हैव सिलेक्टेड दिस ही हैव स्टूड बाय दिस व्यू and then if i agree i accept if i do not agree sati ba there, there is a there is a common mantra given to us sati baadha ke tirjate you give me a counter convince me and for convincing the tools already are developed by them so if you convince yourself it is called swarthanuman if you want to convince others parartanuman all the tools are given to you and so you use them convince me if you convince me i would draw tejjate is it sati baadha ke tejjate and if you are not able to convince me why should you ask me to if you withdraw i will continue with my view and that's the reason that you have so much of depth in all systems of knowledge that is the reason that kind of a freedom of thought so each opinion is analyzed and critically examined if unacceptable why such view is unacceptable is stated with appropriate ground nothing i don't like no will not do why i accept why you have give ground both for both why you accept why do you do not accept tell me what other scientific method should be all needed clarification sometimes you need clarification what you meant when you said this so if if needed clarifications of the statements are sought after having examined in this way all the views jotted down all the views finally the siddhantins view is stated and examined and established you tell me research methodology you teach me no you teach me research methodology example i am not now i will give you any any text you read i have given you n number of vada granthas are there and you read take up any one and see the structure of this any of the 26 discourses in the nyaya siddhanta deep of sadha if if an exam side by side as i told you we needed to have knowledge of purva mimamsa equally to be very strong in discourse in dialogue in debate and they had they developed a paddhati called adhikarana paddhati adhikarana paddhati is nothing but another form of vada and they had developed this adhikarana paddhati so purva mimamsa and also vedanta uttar mimamsa both definitions of adhikar now whatever adhikarana paddhati i have to define vishayo vishayaschaiva purva pakshastha dottara sangatischa iti panchangam shastre adhikaranam smatam so again so have a topic vishaya sandeha only vichara will begin well if something is already decided will there be any discourse if you do not know anything about any bhuta preta etc will you have any discourse no but if somebody says atma asti and somebody says atma nasti oh let us let us debate so samshaye nyaya प्रवर्तते संशयते नाय पर्वते न निर्णयते न अज्ञाते सो ऑलरेडी टोटली नॉट नोन देर कैन नॉट बी विचार इफ इट इज ऑलरेडी नोन नो विचार देन विचार और डिस्कोर्स और डायलॉग और डिबेट विल टेक पेट ओनली वेन देर इज डाउट एंड सो इन द डाउट यू हैव विषय इज द तालव्य डाउट and visha is topic so there should be a doubt that should be a topic that should be a one view that should be another view and all that you speak there should be a cogency a relationship of sangati that sangati is three five factors constitute an adhikarana and that is why shankaracharya or sabara sabaracharya in purva mimamsa both adopted this adhikarana paddhati to engage themselves in a discourse to arrive at the truth so in my opinion my friends this is how nyaya system developed various tools 
to facilitate methods of inquiry into truth, like logic, epistemology, theories of inference, discourse, and so on and so forth. So they are tool providers. <laughs> Naya Shastra is a tool tool provider. Now, why I what I think what should be done? I don't know. Uh, Jawrekar should have been here. As long as many have expressed their unhappiness, I, I was listening very carefully. Why has it, why have we come to this situation in this country? Because we did not introduce these solid contribution of our intellectual past into the mainstream of education. So the need of the town hour is that unless we introduce this as a theme in the mainstream of education, everybody of this country should know it and should be proud of this contribution. But have you provided the opportunity to be proud? You never allow it. And therefore, our education policy is absolutely faulty. And unless we introduce this, I, have, I do not see any future that the situation is going to change because they know there is only darkness and nothing else. And therefore, I should only thank you. Thank you very much.